Hi guys, this is Matthew. So I'm going to be walking you through the quick set front door lock. This is a smart front door lock that we use at all of our properties. And I thought I'd walk you through kind of the ins and outs of this device. There are a few instances where knowledge about how this device works and kind of what can happen is super useful, whether that's like troubleshooting for a guest or a cleaning person or you know what have you. So let's take a look. All right, so we're going to be starting with the exterior of the front door lock. So this is what you see when you walk up to the door and you want to either unlock the door or lock the door. This is a keypad that's used at all of our properties and it's used by really every, anyone and everyone. Property owners, um, cleaning staff, maintenance staff. The first things I want to point out are the buttons. These are buttons that you can press. Something to point out is there are two uh, numbers on each button. So if you want to press one, you'd press here. If you want to press seven, you'd press there. If you want to press eight, you'd press that same button, whether it's seven or eight. So in order to unlock the, the lock, you just enter in the numbers only. So if you had one, two, three, four, it'd be one, two, three, four. That's it you don't press the lock button. The center button is to lock, that's it. This is already covered in our check-in message at check-in when we tell them the front door code. So we say, hey, your front door code is one, two, three, four. The center button is to lock. You don't need to press the center button in order to unlock the, the lock. Something else to point out here is the key entry. There actually is a, there are two keys to every one of these locks and so what happens is um, we will have a lock box on let, let's say for whatever reason um, it could be that the batteries are completely dead or somehow the lock just isn't opening but but that's really that really just doesn't happen it's 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 99% due to user error probably 90 95% due to user error 5% is actual battery 0% is the lock doesn't work anymore. It just doesn't happen. But if we, if there were to be a situation where a guest or someone else literally just could not get in, we have a front, we have a lock box outside every property that takes a code, and inside there is a key to this to this lock. So they can insert that here and still get in. So there's still a manual to there's still a manual way to get in, and we can provide that to guests to property owners, to cleaning staff, what have you. So let's take a look at how this works in practice. So currently the door is locked. You can see I, I can't open it, right? It's in locked position. I have a front door code. My front door code is 1437. So let's enter that code in here to you know, show you how it works. So you can hear it unlock, that's it. So you don't need to press that center button just the numbers only. Now let's say that I wanted to lock the front door. I would just press the center button only. Perfect. Now it's locked and I can't open it. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the back side of the lock. So this is the back side. Um, there are a couple things going on here. So one is this lever. This is actually a manual lever to lock and unlock the door. So it doesn't really need to be explained to guests or anyone else, but when they get inside, they lock the door by turning the lever. So I'm going to do that now. Turn the lever. You can see it went over there and now the door is locked. Okay, perfect. Second thing is this um, light. This is a light that shows the health of the battery and it really only comes on when you use the lock. Every once in a while, once every five minutes or hour or so it, it may show, but the, the, real, the real way for it that it comes on is when using the lock. So they're really just two colors that you need to know. There's green, right, which is, hey, the batteries are good, we're good, the locks, you know, 
the batteries are full. Another color that you might see is red. Red means the batteries are low, they might be almost dead, or they could be dead. And so when we use the lock, oop, you just saw it was green, right? See that? It just flashed. Every once in a while it'll flash on its own. Oop, there it goes again. So it's not a surefire thing that you'll see this light um, when you use the lock or open the door or what have you, but it does um, tend to show more often when the lock is getting used, when it was recently used or just locked, just unlocked, so on and so forth. Um, the reason, so how does this, why is this important? It's because sometimes we'll get guests that are, uh, that accuse the front door lock of, oh, it's out of batteries. It's, it's low on batteries. It's not, it's not working anymore because the batteries are out. Um, this light will tell you whether or not that's really the case. So if it's yellow or orange, definitely it's still working, but needs to be swapped out with fresh batteries. Um, if it's red, it definitely needs to be swapped out. Um, if it's red, it doesn't necessarily mean that the lock does not work and will not work. It just means the batteries are definitely low. Another thing to know is this cover. So this cover just slips off the top. Um, I actually don't, there are screws that you can, uh, that you can keep on here. Is, I don't know if you can see, see that? Yeah, that's a screw. There's another one on the other side. So this can actually screw on. That's how they like, but I actually don't like doing that because I just like to slip this off easily. Okay, so here is the back side. So up top you have the battery container. Um, that's where the batteries are. It takes AA batteries. Um, and you can see it's got this door with an arrow pointed. So it needs to be pointed that, that way, right? Towards the door with the arrows. Um, you can pull this container out just like that. Super easy. So if, um, you know, if we know that the batteries need to get swapped out, it's just a matter of lifting this cover lifting this cover off and pulling out this battery container. So you swap out the batteries, that's it. It's, it's really simple, super simple. Um, once the batteries are back in here and, and you're ready to put the batteries back in the lock, it's just a matter of you know, making sure the arrows are pointed at the door and you slip that back in. Yep. There you go, and uh, the, the green light showed. We know that the front door lock is good to go. Something else that I just wanna call out, and you really, you really don't need to know about this, but um, you, know, you can program codes in here manually. We don't do that. This is actually a Z-Wave um, Z lock, which just means this lock uh, connects to a controller and I'll have installed this will already be have been installed it's this little white device it's like a kind of a rounded rounded square device and that's what's talking to the front door lock it allows us to do a bunch of things we get notifications when we can set notifications for when any front door lock is used um, so we know, oh, okay, the, the property owner just, just, just unlocked the door. Oh, the, that maintenance staff that we scheduled, oh, they're finally here. So we get all those notifications. We also get notifications set up to notify us um, if the guest is unlocking or locking the door like super duper late at night. You know, let's say they're coming and going at 2.30 in the morning or 3.30 in the morning. That's, you know, a suggestion that they're, they may be behaving inappropriately. It doesn't mean that they're behaving inappropriately, but we definitely need to check that, to check that out to make sure they're not. And if they are, then, then we need to talk to them to make sure they don't do that uh, the next night. Um, another thing is uh, this allows us to manually open this 
lock from the phone. So if a guest was to be unable to get in, um, we could actually manually unlock it for them. We can also check from the phone whether the lock really is locked or unlocked. So only myself has all these permissions, um, but it's today and I might, I might actually change that. Um, but it's just something to know about um, these locks. Okay, so now that we've covered the device itself, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what actually happens. Things that happen during the stay, things that happen you know, when a cleaner is trying to get in or what have you. Um, I would say the biggest um, sort of issue that we deal with is, oh, um, the front door lock isn't, my code isn't working. I, basically, I'm, I'm not able to get in. It's locked. It could be like, hey, my code isn't working. I'm not able to get in. The lock doesn't work. So the first thing to do is, is get them to unpack that right the first thing is to say oh I'm so sorry about that what happens when you enter your code question mark right um, and then second second question is are you pressing the lock button after entering your code you only need to enter in the numbers of the code we've actually had even property owners um, be confused about that. Entering the code and pressing lock right away and then going, hey, the lock isn't opening, what's going on? What's happening is they've unlocked it by the code and then they're pressing lock right away. So they're locking themselves. Um, but it could be more than that. So um, the second thing is the Batteries may be low. It's possible. I'd say it's unlikely. Why? Because I've actually set, to get, set up to get notifications um, about the battery. So it notifies me if the batteries are, left, are less than 50% in the first place. So it would be unusual for that not to get triggered um, before it gets so low that it doesn't even work. So that's, that's actually uncommon. So I want you to think about, try to get that out of your mind. Like, um, don't just assume, oh, of course the batteries are low. The batteries are out. Probably not, probably not. Um, if they say, oh yeah, I'm entering the code. I've entered the code and nothing happens. So what you wanna do next is Try to get them to tell you, okay, like, does, is it, does each button make a noise when you press the button? You notice on here, like when I was pressing the, the, the buttons, each button, it goes beep. Every time a button is pressed, it should make a noise on the lock. If it's not making a noise, then that definitely suggests that the battery is dead. If it's, if it's making no noise, whether it's pressing a number or the lock button. But what I want you to have them do first is, okay, hey, try this. Press the lock button first. So let's make sure it's in the locked position. Give it a moment, give it a couple moments, then enter your code. And that actually works often because for a couple of reasons. One is the lock, like the little lever may have gotten stuck or it may have like kind of gotten stuck in, a, in an intermediary position um, and that would get it back to all the way locked, um, which would then be ready to get unlocked. The second reason that may be effective is that what may have been happening is they may be entering the code in so many times so quickly, like 
entering it once, it's not like then entering it right away again, trying to get in, waiting, you know, pressing lock and then waiting a couple moments gives the lock some time to kind of reset and be ready for a code. So that would be the next thing to do, which is like, hey, okay, I understand when you enter your code, you wouldn't actually say all of this, but you say, hey, all right, please try this. Press the lock button first, wait a few moments, then enter your code and tell me what happens. The next thing that I want you to be doing actually from the beginning is getting on the camera as well, um, which is like go to the Ring app, go to the Blink app, and like verify. So it's like what will have happened is like they'll be, we'll be getting a message. They may have already gotten in by the time that you're starting to respond. So that can give you confirmation. Um, also, what you can do through these cameras is you can speak. You can talk to them, right? You can tell them, hey, um, okay, let's wait a second. What happens when you press a button? Does it make a sound? Is, right? Um, ah, okay, it is making a sound, but the lock isn't opening, got it. Okay, what I want you to do is press lock first, that center button, so just press the center button, wait a few moments, then enter your code. And enter the number only, right? Enter your code only, not, not don't press lock, just enter the number only. You can kind of, you can troubleshoot with them right there over the camera. Um, if all else fails, what you can do is contact me and I can check. Typically what's happening too is like I'll see this is happening because I even get notifications if the guest, if someone has entered in a bunch of codes right in a row, which is typically ha what happens when they're struggling. I'll see that and um, what I can do is I can go on to the basically the controller app, like what controls this lock, and I can see what status the lock is in, whether it's locked, whether it's unlocked, whether it's connected, disconnected, what have you. Um, so I can verify what's going on with the lock. I can see what the battery percentage is. Um, I can also manually lock or unlock it. So like this just came up the other day where the guest was saying, oh my gosh, the, lock, the code doesn't work. The front door isn't opening. Um, what happened is I got on and I manually locked it and then I manually unlocked it from my phone, all from my phone, and boom, they were in. Um, and they've actually been using that same code since. I don't... So I assume what the problem was, was the lock somehow got stuck like in between and wasn't unlocking because it wasn't quite in a locked state when they're entering the code. Um, but it wasn't the code, it wasn't the lock, it wasn't the battery. And they were thinking that, oh, it's the battery, it doesn't work, it's, you just gotta, it takes some skill to Stop what you're doing and just move through this process. Um, the very last resort is to give them the lockbox can response or save reply essentially, which is like for every property there's a lockbox. I'll show you what this is actually. So that's one of these. I install these, one of these outside every property. Why? Because it takes a code um, and we can contain a front door key in here. Um, that way, like no matter what, that person can still get inside at that time, no matter what, right? No matter what. So we don't give this out 
eas like quickly or easily. It's really the last, last resort. Um, but it is there in case nothing else has worked. So that's a lot of info. I hope this, you know, I hope that this, is, this has been helpful, but I, I want you guys to really understand how this lock works. I've chosen this lock because it is the most reliable, best, best user interface that I could find that was inter internet connected. Um, I've tried other locks, didn't like them as much as this one. You know, I, I would definitely prefer for every number to be uh, a different button. Also, you know, this whole like lock, unlock button, it just, people seem to get trip, tripped up on it still about that center lock button. They think it's the unlock button, it's really not, it's just a lock button. But beyond that, it's a pretty great lock. So I want you guys to, to be able to understand you know more about this lock so you have all the information that you need to really troubleshoot when it comes up because it does come up it's going to come up um, one other thing that just came to mind is like we do use duracell AA batteries these are good batteries and they last a long time like they they seriously last six months to a year easily um, and so with crummy batteries, definitely these things run out of battery quickly. Um, I've used other batteries that, that they only lasted like a couple weeks, um, maybe a few weeks. These ones last a long time. So um, just want to emphasize that there's, the batteries last for a long, they're good batteries that last for a long time. You know, we get notifications based on the battery status. So, and all these things are, you know, what happens and what to do if the guests or someone else can't get in. So thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon.